Hi guys and welcome back. So in my head I've got this song. This is for the players in the hood. Up to no good. Who sang that? Who sang that? Oh my god, I need to go on YouTube and figure it out. It's just been playing in my head and I think it's because of today's title, right? So today I'm talking to you guys about players in the pub, in the pew, in the pulpit, baby. Hey. <laughs> so this one's going to be so good. You so want to watch this all the way to the end. Okay, so if you're new to this channel, welcome to Chengi's World. Make sure you subscribe like comment and share 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 okay and um join me on instagram and facebook and let's get this party going right and also look out for my new book and my coaching uh and my coaching my new coaching one-to-one -one that i'll be starting with you guys in february if you want to have one-to-one -one coaching for people who are serious serious and i mean serious about getting the ring who are serious about getting married or coming into a committed and healthy happy happy relationship that is going towards marriage then i want to hear from you uh and then i can book you in onto my one-to-one -one coaching sessions just email me chengi Chengi's world at gmail.com simples okay i'll put in the description box Chengi's world at gmail.com let me know if you're interested so that i can uh, i can earmark you for when the course when i'm ready to get up and started um i can only work with five people so i will have to vet uh, my clients because I don't want anyone who's going to waste my time. So I, I, I really will sort of spend some time vetting and maybe, um, you might not be, um, right for the kind of coaching that I want to do, but you might be good for a session or two. So I will have a few one or two sessions available, uh, group sessions available that we can do online. Uh, but for that one-to-one -one coaching, I can only take five people. So I'm really excited. Uh, and make sure you email me if that is something that you're really interested in. If you feel like, yeah, the time has come, I am ready now to settle down, get married and be happy. And I just need somebody to hold my hand through the process to, to, to be by my side, to be on, on, on speed dial when I'm on a date, somebody that I can reference as quick quickly as possible uh, and get an answer if I'm in a bit of a situation and somebody who will walk with me and 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 just groom me for 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 marriage uh, and that's what I I I, I feel led uh, to do for you guys so the program will be called get the ring okay so players in the pews hey in the pulpit and in the pub I loved it it just I knew it was the Holy Ghost because it was just like flowing okay so I was, uh, I've, I have a weird, I, I've always been weird, right? I've been weird because as much as I love God, as much as I adore him, I always had this thing where I used to find sex men, Christian men unsexy. I just found them kind of weird. I'm thinking that church men were crazy, like church guys were weird um, and backward and expected women to be a certain kind of way so i grew up just really saying to god i don't want to date a christian guy and until until much later i still had a resistance i would walk into church and i find none of them attractive because i simply think well you're going to be boring now i knew the whys and wherefores of why i should be equally yoked i knew all of it but i just thought god i've given you enough and a lot and i'm just not i'm not i'm not ending up with that guy <laughs> Anyway, I had no idea, right, that uh, in the church is, is, where, is where the players be at. <laughs> this is not one of those videos, people, where you kind of do, yeah, I always knew the church was false. Look, I need to put this disclaimer. When I make this video, it's not to put a downer on the church or to segregate christian men and make them hypocrites because that would be totally unfair and untrue the, what i'm just doing is demystifying this whole idea especially with christian women that if i find a man in church then he's going to be saved we're going to be equally yoked. then church is a safer environment and so a lot of girls end up getting laid getting used abused taken for granted and hurt because we assume what nobody really is trying to sell you, okay? Not all pastors sleep with your congregation. Not all members of men in church have affairs with members of the congregation. In fact, there are a lot of honorable, great, decent men in church 
but there are also a lot of great, honorable, decent men in pubs and clubs, right? So the point of this video is that men are men and the devil can come to church too. He can come to church too. Like there are people that come to church for all the wrong reasons. Um, so what I'm trying to do is open up our minds as women and even as men that just because she's holding her hands up in worship higher than everybody else, don't mean she ain't no hoe, okay? You know, hello. It doesn't mean she's not a hoe, right? But what it means is that they are trying, they're on a process and a journey and in an environment where at least somebody is going to guide and tell them that is not the way. And even if they choose to rebel, they understand that they're in rebellion mode, okay? You as a man and a woman, and a man or a woman have to assess a person by the by the depth of their character. You have to ass assess the person the same way you would assess somebody you meet off the street. You have to walk in with your guard up in the same way that you would have your guard up if you were going into a situation in, in, into work or into a club or into a pub. You have to have your guard up the same way. You have to have your guard up the same way even if you are speaking to your pastor, even if you're speaking to one of the elders, even if you're speaking to one of the deacons, even if you speak because look, I don't believe that I, 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 I have been through, seen through, been in the church, backstage, in I mean, I am only 40, but I've lived the life of an 80 year old, I swear. I've seen a lot because I was exposed to ministry and to life a very young age and I had to, to become wise and I had to observe and, and to, in order for me to keep, I've seen a lot, heard a lot. And because people confide in me naturally, because that is my gift, people open up to me naturally. I hear stories that most people will never, ever, ever hear. And one of the things I've concluded is that pastors and, and bishops and priests, they're not hypocrites. They're merely men, right? My pastor always used to say, they're merely men and they're merely women. My pastor always used to say to the church all the time, she used to say, I have the same grace you have to live the life that Christ wants us to live. I don't get special measures on how to live right because I'm your pastor. I don't get, no, like God doesn't say, okay, this is my word. Um, everybody obey it except for the pastors because I've given them extra help to live right. Uh, uh, baby. In fact, because they are called to lead, they are going to be tempted more. They're going to be, I, I, I remember listening to, to a pastor once tell me that women would come into his office for counseling and they would strip naked, take it all off. Now, when the story, now, how often, now you can probably tell that one that you don't fancy what put your clothes on, get out. You might be able to tell the other one. You might be able to cast that one. But the day is going to come when a girl who's fine as hell doesn't necessarily strip her clothes off, but she begins to lure you. How many times can a human being say no? Look, I know we're quick to judge. We're quick to condemn. We're quick to say the church, uh, the religious people, the hypocrites. We're quick to. But nobody is coming to your office and taking their clothes off, Mr. Judge the other guy, Miss Judge that pastor no one is coming to strip off in your office no one is coming to church with a short skirt and and boobs out and strategically placing themselves in your full view and testing your humanity all the time if somebody kept offering you something that everybody wants how many times can you say, if you're, if you're a human being, one day is going to come. You could say no to somebody giving you a bribe today. No to somebody giving you a bribe tomorrow. But if people are offering you bribes all the time, the day is going to come when you need that money. The day is going to come in that pastor's life when things are not going well at home. And the right girl, that Satan sends the right girl. Or even, even if she's not of Satan, she's probably got something in your, and, 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 and a situation orchestrated. That one day, when you had that one fight, after many thousands of offers that you've said no, because nobody's going to ever know that when they caught you in sin, that when you were caught in sin and they all left your church and they all abandoned you, what they don't know is that you've said no thousands of times. What they don't know... What they don't know, even female pastors get approached, get 
weary you're a single person in ministry you're traveling pillar to post you're coming home to an empty hotel you're coming home to nobody you have a house and nobody's there to cuddle you one day one of the offers is gonna do and you're not a bad person they're not bad people they're not evil people they're not trying to do you anything that musician who's playing the instrument and he's not a player he is a man who has many offers i I can't tell you the pressure that is there when you are doing something in the house of God. It's as if a light shines upon you. There's an anointing and it's sexy. And, and you know, there's something about you. And women and men are coming and they're looking and they want some and they will try it and they will try it. And only those who don't get tried are the first ones to judge. Look, I've always been the sort of person who's like, you know what, give them a break i'm that sort of person if i found out that my pastor was sleeping with somebody i'm going to come to church on sunday i'm going to pray for him i'm going to love him and i'm going to forgive him and i'm going to come because i don't have to sit in his shoes i'm not the one who has to go be up all night praying 10 hours i'm not the one that constantly women are coming in and, and constantly constantly some of these ministers have 10,000 members. Look at the person. Even if a thousand come into your office every year, even if you put a secretary in your office, there's some things that somebody wants to speak to you in confidence and you have to just trust that you have it in you. You, we, we are so quick to judge and so quick to condemn. And that's what this video is not about that. This video is about recognizing everybody's humanity. I am not safe because you're a pastor and you want to talk to me and you want to meet me for a coffee. I'm not safe. Because you're a pastor. I'm safe because I live a life that is wise. I don't allow myself to be alone with anyone that is inappropriate for me to be alone with. Unless I absolutely have to be. And in which case, sometimes I take somebody with me. One of the that I set a, a boundary around myself. That in order for me to get to that point. Because I have been foolish in the past. I haven't protected myself in the past. And I have opened up doors because I've not protected myself. So when I'm in the church, I don't just decide, okay, we're in the church, we're in a holy place, everybody's intentions are good. If I can just find me a man here in church, I'm good. If you come to church every Sunday, I'm good. No, because in church are wife beaters, in church are abusive men, in church are, are adulterous people, people who cheat. Church is full of human beings. So you're not safe because you're in church, but you're not unsafe because you're in church either. And so it's about coming into that, teaching us to come into balance, realizing that we must have our eyes open. We must be wise. We must assess a guy on the same basis as we would anywhere else. And we must reserve judgment when we see something happening that we don't understand, right? Let's reserve judgment because we don't know people that fall, public figures, presidents, prime ministers, people that we respect and honor, we're so quick to judge because somehow they've got blue blood running through their veins, right? They don't have red blood. No, 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 no. They're not built with flesh and blood because the moment they became somebody, it's like the moment they were inaugurated or anointed or ordained, you know, like God drained them of your, their humanity and punched divinity into them and somehow we can sh we can go out there show them some cleavage show them that and they they ain't gonna get an erection mm -mm, no 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 because they they're not real we can behave any kind of way around them we can we can we can be intolerant now look of course as a leader there must be a degree of 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 of, of being able to to handle yourself but remember that you're not being tested the way that the average member of the congregation is being tested. So when, especially when we're dealing with people in leadership who are perpetually being, being barraged by these things, especially when we're, we're dealing with, with these situations, then we have to be even more prayerful, more careful, more thoughtful, because they cannot dismantle their humanity to keep you safe. It's a two-way street. And so for me, it is always such a big, tragedy when great men and women of God who have done so much for the body of Christ, who've done so much for church, for the world, who have contributed so much, go down the drain because they made a mistake. About those nights, when will you stand up for him? The things that pastors and leaders hear that we congregants get up to. When I was a pastor, 
people would come into my office and they'll confess all kind of crazy, right? I wasn't really, when I was, you know, working with my pastor. They would confess all kind of crazy, right? And I am not supposed to judge them. I was there to bring healing and restoration into their lives, not to judge them. But God forbid I make a mistake. God forbid I lose my way. I remember when I got divorced, ain't nobody had time for me. Nobody had mercy for me. Anyone who wanted to know what was going on was there to just find out what's going down so they can spread the news to everybody else. Right? Because the reality is those in authority, they're not, they're not the same. But the same grace that we sh they have shown us and for a congregation to get to 3,000, somebody has paid a price. Someone has paid a price. Somebody has paid a price. But nobody's got time for that. No, we ain't got time for that. We have time to condemn you, to desert you, and to leave you. And so for me, it's about realizing, yes, we do need to, to come into greater purity, but we are transforming to be transformed to, into the image of Christ. No one is there yet. When we get there, we'll be like Enoch, we're what we got and we're not. We're all working on a part of ourselves. Yes, there are pastors that are alcoholics, but it doesn't mean they're not cold. It doesn't mean that they don't care. It doesn't mean that they are not helping lives today. It means they've got that issue to work out. Yes, there, there are pastors that are depressed. Yes, there are people that are battling with issues that we think they shouldn't be dealing with, that we think somehow, in, but they are, but yet they're there for us all the time. So it's not about judging. It's just about saying, look, there's a player in the pulpit. There's a player in the pew. Anyone, and some are deliberately players. Some take advantage of their position. Yes, they do. But don't judge. Oh, he's there with a the mic. He's holy. I can trust him. I can be alone with him. I can go to his house. I can be there cooking for him and chilling out with him. I No, you have to be wise. You have to take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. And you have to be wise and conduct yourself with the same integrity that you would on an ordinary occasion guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy this video make sure you leave a comment because this is i know a really hot topic and we we, we don't want to talk about it when we talk about it we're bad about it so i want you guys to leave comments and let's have a constructive conversation okay because if, if it's not constructive i'm going to delete you okay so let's have a constructive conversation and and really begin to see that actually um you know we as women and men we need to be wise okay and I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you on my next video. Take care of you. Love you lots. Mwah.